So you got yourself a Nintendo Switch Lite and with two years of backlog behind, what games are you going to get? Now obviously there are the big hitters like Mario and Zelda and Splatoon 2 and things like that, but we don't wanna cover that this time around. We wanna go ahead and talk to you about the games that actually are kind of out of the spotlight, but still worth your time. Correct, so here are our top 10 must own games for the Switch in no particular order. None whatsoever. TGR. Let's start off with Hyper Light Drifter. Honestly, Hyper Light Drifter was a pleasant surprise. I kind of followed the development cycle behind it, but when I jumped into the game, the pixel art perfection, the music, the environmental storytelling, and the natural progression and story, you feel like you're in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world, trying to find your way to find a cure for not only yourself, but the rest of the people in the world. Without spoiling too much of the story, it's definitely worth your time, and it's a perfect indie to take on the go. Next game on our list, Astral Chain, a game that's only been out for less than two weeks. It's a Planum Games developed title published by Nintendo. It's a new IP that is owned by Nintendo, and it has all the Planum Games flair that you come to expect. The story, which is somewhat bare bones at the beginning and very kind of cliche and typical, does evolve into something grander. You are essentially a new a rookie cop that is now taking care of the legions that you use to fight supernatural powers in this almost post-apocalyptic world. The gameplay is very different from what I'm used to from Platinum Games. It has a lot of uh, combat with a second person around, a second character that follows you, your legion. So with that being said, the combat inputs are slightly more simple, but you get more out of it using different type of combinations. It's definitely worth looking into if you're a fan of Platinum Games and if you're a fan of action games in general. Next on the list, we have Celeste. Honestly, this was an indie platformer that I had no idea I would spend 40 to 50 plus hours trying to get a perfect record. On top of the amazing story that's there, there are B-sides and C-sides that ramp up the difficulty in platforming. This is not only a great game, but an amazing story that dives into the mental illness of anxiety and how people cope with it. There is plenty of other characters that are within the game aside from Madeline, the main character, but in all honesty, this hits home in, in many ways. Not only do I deal with mental illness myself, but there are other people around me that have dealt with that personally as well. So honestly, play the game, it's worth it. I really don't want to spoil too much, but this is definitely worth your time. Whether it's on sale or full price, get it. The next game on our list is Undertale. Now Undertale is not a new game by any means. It came out in 2015, but it took the world by storm. Within months, people were just People were screaming from the top of these mountains saying that this is the next generation of gaming Jesus. It really is that good of a game though. The game, I'm not gonna go into it. And if you've noticed already, we're gonna be light on the spoilers because we don't wanna talk too much about these stories. But Undertale's story is extremely unique in the way that it's told. And just to give you a very, very basic synopsis, you can either play the game without killing anybody or killing everybody. And that is all I'm going to tell you. If you've never played Undertale, and I'm sure you've heard of it, play it as blind as you can because it will subvert all your expectations. Fire Emblem Three Houses honestly was my personal first Fire Emblem game ever. And I went in with little to no expectations and then all of a sudden E3 happened. They had their treehouse and I was blown away. When I started the game, I didn't really know 100% what I was getting into either because I saw some of the gameplay, but the story was amazing. The characters in it are amazing. And there is some mechanics that are a little bit tropey in regards to games, but everything is explained beautifully. Gameplay wise, there are a couple of ways that you can play. There is the normal mode or the classic mode. There's a little bit of, of a casual aspect to it or a hard aspect to it. And there is a time reversal mechanic that's in there to help out people that are new to the series like myself. That being said, later on in the game, I didn't find myself using it. And I really don't wanna spoil any stories because Depending on which house you choose, your story fluctuates greatly. Honestly, even though there's three houses, the game itself takes about 60 hours, but I've heard that the new game plus takes less time. You level up a lot faster and the story from 
each of those aspects and each of those uh, angles are definitely worth your time. The next game on our list is Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. This is the culmination of classic Monster Hunter game. The game has over 100 large monsters and hundreds of hours will be spent if you choose to play this game. There is a demo on the Switch if you've never played a Monster Hunter game before, and if you don't know anything about the series, it's essentially an action game with RPG elements. You hunt a monster, you kill it, you take the parts and build new weapons and armors to fight even harder monsters. That's it. That's all you do. You don't go into Monster Hunter expecting an amazing story. What you do get, however, is some seriously awesome boss fights. It is entirely a boss rush mode. Get it, play it, and join the hunt. It's amazing. Hollow Knight is the epitome of cute bugs and Metroidvania. <laughs> the gameplay is honestly one of the best Metroidvanias that I played first mm -hmm. on the Switch, mm -hmm. and I was waiting patiently for it. When Team Cherry went ahead and announced that it was coming to the console, I stopped playing my Steam version of it and waited because the Switch is the perfect console for this and the Switch Lite is even more of a perfect console. You can take Hollow Knight on the go. The story in this post-apocalyptic world of bugs fits beautifully in with the somber music, the somber styling, and everything that's behind the almost godlike story where you're, I, I just, I really don't want to spoil it for you. Don't, it's, don't. it's really, <laughs> it's really, good. really good. And it kind of has almost a Dark Souls-esque style of storytelling because you do piece things together. There is no in your face storytelling in the game itself. That being said, there were plenty of expansions that were added to the base game for free. Thank you, Team Cherry. And it just built and built and built on top of it. That being said, quick segue, I will go ahead and say that Silk Son is looking beautiful and Oof. I cannot wait to play that game. Please, please, uh, release Please, it. Team Cherry, <laughs> show us something. But without further ado, definitely, definitely worth it picking up. Have you ever guys heard of the Doom Slayer? I have. And that's our next game, it's Doom. <laughs> Doom is a game that came out originally in 2016 for all the major consoles, and I played it on PS4, and now it's on Switch. Granted, it doesn't look as pretty, it doesn't run as smoothly, however, it's still Doom on the go. Now, this game is a perfect first-person shooter in terms of combat, in terms of fluidity. It is just a fast-paced killing machine. That's what the game is. That's what you are as a Doom Slayer in this title. If you like your first-person shooters, I highly, highly recommend it. Do keep in mind that if you do want to play the multiplayer, you have to download it. It's a big patch or a big download for the Switch. Might want to have some space for that. But get Doom. You'll like it. Trust me. Cadence of Hyrule. Oh my god. We what did not game. expect this to what even happen because what a thing. Nintendo took an indie developer, took it under its wing, gave it its IP, and it pretty much ran with it. I didn't play the original Crypt of the Necrodancer, but going into this game with my love for Zelda, it almost felt like a natural Zelda game. There, If you're looking for a 2D Zelda, this is perfect. The there are aspects of the game that are a little bit different than your traditional Zelda game, obviously, since it is a rhythm-based game, but there are ways that kind of give you a crutch if you're new to the series, and the procedurally generated dungeons go ahead and change things up with each and every single playthrough. That being said, you can also play as Zelda, which I found that very intriguing. Yes. I did not expect that at all by any means. But overall, I spent a good amount of time this summer playing this game with Link's Awakening right around the corner. This is something that's very, very close to home that'll cleanse your palate and prep you up for that. And last, but certainly not least, Overwatch. Now, at the time of this release, it hasn't come out yet on the Switch. However, as somebody who's played over 500 hours on two different accounts, you gotta play it. If you like your multiplayer games, if you like competitive team-based games, if you like hero-based games with tons of abilities and lots of different ways to play, Overwatch is the place to go. It has a, it's a game that's full of content if you like your multiplayer-based games. And it also has a lot of diversity in the cast, it will more than likely fill whatever you want to play as because you have a, a, a traditional shooter with just a regular gun or you have grenades or you have energy balls or you have energy beams or you can hit somebody with sound. It's insane. So play the game, enjoy the game, 
And if you want to know more about Overwatch, I made a video. It's right here. Why I still play Overwatch in 2019. I had to plug it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there are a bunch of other gems that are on this console. Uh, the this Switch has a lot of games, the man. The Switch has a bunch of games, and this generation, the, honestly, the Switch is bay. Like, yeah. There's no other way to think of it. Um, that being said, there are a couple of other games that we wanted to go ahead and mention. First off, Shovel Knight. This is a game uh, he recommended that I play. A long time ago. A long time when ago. When it was on the Wii U. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think uh, we got it on Steam. I, I gifted it to you in yes, Steam. <laughs> and I ended up playing it on the Switch. Um, <laughs> if you're into any form of classic, almost Mega Man-esque style of platforming, this is perfect for you. There are so many gadgets and gizmos that you get as you progress the story. And then there's free DLC that comes with it too. Tons of it. it yeah. It's such a great game that if you're even remotely into platforming, buy it, get it, it's worth it. The next honorable mention is Bayonetta 1 and 2. And the reason why they didn't want to put this on the list originally was because they are ports of older games. Bayo 1 you can get on Steam, Bayo 2 you can get on the Wii U if you know, you're one of the 10 people that own it. <laughs> um, they are amazing. I mean, they are top tier character action games. Um, they are very different than Astral Chain, though they are developed by Platinum. So if you do want to try something that's more purely action, play Bayonetta 1 and 2. And you get two games for the price of one. And they are the most stable versions that you will get of these games on a console. Highly recommended from us. And the last honorable mention will be Deltarune. Why Deltarune? Because it's a sequel to Undertale. <laughs> That's about as much as I can tell you. It does play very differently than Undertale. Oh yeah? Very, very differently. In Undertale, like I mentioned earlier, you get to choose between killing and not killing. In Deltarune, you still don't want to kill, but you have a party now. And the oh. party, there's one member that is Berserk, always. So you have to warn the enemies so they don't get hit. It's a very unique combat system, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Play Deltarune. The I've first chapter it, so is that, free. That's very interesting. That's very yeah, interesting. yeah. The first chapter is free on the Nintendo Switch, and the next chapter, they're probably going to have to pay for it, but play it. It's free. Yeah. And enjoy. That's awesome. <laughs> So let us know what you think of this list. Obviously there's a bunch of games that we didn't talk about because the Switch library is growing so much so fast. That being said, leave comments below. Let us know what games we may have missed, any games that we should play. And aside from that guys, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you wanna follow along with us and everything else that we're putting up, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the little bell that way you know when we post new things but until next time guys thanks for watching yeah deuces later enjoy your new switch <laughs> that's the whole point <laughs> enjoy it like what you saw check out some of our other videos be sure to click the subscribe button hit the little bell and let us know your thoughts in the comments below thanks for your support and thanks for watching